Hi, and welcome to Dramatic Knits. My name is Steve, also known as Dramatic Knits. And I'm Kelly, also known as Calsters. And today is Sunday, November 19th, 2017. This is episode 295. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back one more week. Or one more episode, I should say. And if you're a new viewer, I hope you enjoy today's episode and you'll come back in the future. We always love hearing that people found the podcast mm -hmm. six plus years into doing it. Yeah. Um, love getting new viewers. So um, feel free to pass along the word to, you know, those of you, your friends who are into knitting. And if they're not watching podcasts in general, it still amazes me how many people are like, I just started, you know, watching podcasts and... That's awesome. So, anyway, how have you all been? It has been a whirlwind for both of us, but I have been out of the country and I'm back. It's crazy. So, yeah, let's just jump into what's been going on in our lives for the past two weeks, if you care to listen. If not, there's always a fast forward button. But, um, last time we spoke, I was preparing to go to the Knitting Pipeline Eagle Crest Retreat, which is held in Washburn, Illinois. And um, on Friday morning, I drove out there. It was about an hour and a half drive, and it is rural once you get out there. It is literally in the middle of farmland. Um, but I found it. I had to, you know, over the river and through the woods, but I found the retreat center. Uh, and... Um, unloaded yarn and I was going to teach my boomerang class before people could shop and I was not even done putting yarn on tables and people were shopping. So um, that was exciting and luckily I had, somehow I had enough cell phone reception to run the, you know, card reader and things like that. Um, but so people did some shopping and then I taught um, my boomerang workshop, which was a great success, but I felt like a lot of people there were maybe... Um, a, a more intermediate to advanced knitters. So it did not take a whole lot of time for them to grasp the concept. Um, and so it actually morphed into my other, what I call class that I teach, which isn't my presentation, which is talking about um, hand dyeing yarn and, and owning a small business. And there was, so there were a lot of questions from people about that. And so they, I said, joked with them. I said, you got a two for one. You got the boomerang class and the presentation all in one. Um, so then I um, sold some more yarn and went to pack up and, I was so excited for vacation and Paula was like, you're going to stay for lunch. I was like, I really need to hit the road. You know, I need to go finish packing. And she, she's like, okay. And she came back five minutes later. She's like, I'm insisting you stay for lunch. It'll be quick. You can eat. And I'm glad she did because I would have been starving by the time I got home. So um, got to enjoy lunch with Paula and chit chat with a few of the ladies. And then I drove back and um, packed and Andy got home and we finished packing orders for the shop. And then we hit the road and went up to Chicago and stayed at a hotel right outside of O'Hare. And uh, got up early in the morning and flew to Cancun. Um, the flight there was not bad at all. It was beautiful. Um, my medicinal encouragement helped me uh, a lot out there um, because I'm extremely afraid of heights and I hate flying. But uh, let me tell you, business class helped and uh, the medicinal encouragement helped. So. Um, we got to Cancun and uh, got a, our shuttle over to the resort, which the resort we stayed at was called Le Blanc, and it is part of the Palace Resorts in Cancun. There's about five or six resorts under their name, and I cannot recommend their resort enough. If you followed me on Instagram, you could see how beautiful the resort was. Um, their service is second to none. I mean, it took some getting used to the first two days, and then I got real used to it, but like... You know, you have breakfast buffets and lunches, but they don't even, like, a lot of times the waiters won't even let you carry your own plate to your table. They, like, you know, and they refold your napkins and everything. Like, if you want to be pampered and relax and not worry about anything and have beautiful views and just get rejuvenated, I highly, highly recommend LeBlanc. It's an adults-only, all-inclusive resort. Um, the service is, like I said, second to none. So, um... The nice thing about this particular resort is it's, we found out through talking to people that it's probably about the, the highest of their resorts. Um, and so you get a wristband. I don't know. I've never done this, but you get a wristband that actually lets you in your room and you have to wear it all week. 
Um, but though that wristband gets you into any of the other resorts. So if you wanted to travel out of the resort and go to another one, you could eat at their restaurants, take, um, you know, participate in their spas, their activities, any of that, but they can't come to our resort. So that kept our numbers down. Like if you've seen my pictures, the beach isn't very crowded. I mean, there were busy times, but it wasn't crowded. The pool was not crowded. Um, restaurants were not crowded, which was nice. So, um, there was that um, quick rundown of what we did. We got there Saturday. We enjoyed some time by the ocean. It was a little cloudy. Um, Sunday was a little spotty rain and cloudy, but we still spent most of the day on the beach. And we, I had my 100 SPF sunscreen on, sprayed it on. Um, we realized the spray was not great for Andy because he woke up the next day and was sunburnt, all splotchy all over his shoulder and front because the spray, we didn't rub it in. My issue was I sprayed my legs and then sat on the chairs and my shorts went up. So I have some sunburnt kneecaps and up lower thighs that are now fine. They're just itching, but they hurt for two days pretty bad. Um, other than that, that's about, I got some sun on my head and face, but I stayed in the shade a lot. Um, and then I can't remember what we did really Monday other than more of the beach. Um, I know on Tuesday we booked massages at the spa. We, you get so many resort credits that you can use for different things. So I did my first massage. It was their basic package, but their spa is utterly beautiful. And again, the service is great. Um, they, you know, take you and sit you down, put a warm neck pillow around your neck and before your massage. Um, I was a little nervous because I'm not very, um, I'm self-conscious about my body a lot. And, um, I'm also sensitive, but best 50 minutes I've had in a long time. Like once I just said, Steve, you need to relax. This is what people do. You know, this is what they do for a living. Um, it was amazing. So and we, it was actually a couple's uh, massage. So there's two masseuses and Andy and I were together. Um, and then, you know, you walk out and they are like, they sit you down in another chair and they're like, here's some orange cookies and some tea and some chocolate that you can enjoy. Oh, it was delicious. So we did that. And then we, um, had lunch and we came back to the spa, a different part, and we got manicures. Andy wanted to get manicures for some reason. And then I couldn't, the lady asked me if I wanted polish, and so I didn't know, and she put it on, and Andy was like, oh, those are shiny nails. They're fine now, but I was like, I don't know. I've never, I had a manicure once from first year or two of college, but. And the part of there, they had that fish spa thing there too, where the fish eat your dead skin off your feet. So there were some ladies doing that while we were getting manicures. It was interesting. Um, and then Wednesday we booked a cabana on the beach and had all day on the cabana. You got a bottle of champagne with it and cabana service, which was really nice, um, just to be completely out of the sun and kind of hidden away. And then that night, um, they transformed the cabanas into, um, seating areas for romantic dinners on the beach. So we, um, had a romantic six course dinner on the beach. Their food, the presentation is stunning. I would say their food is really good. Nothing like blew us away. Um, I think just cause they're mass producing so much food, it's hard to do anything amazingly. But the romantic dinner on the beach was beautiful. Um, we had like three waiters that night. One was so young and he opened the bottle of champagne and there's a roof on the cabana and it, it he didn't, he didn't aim it away or catch it. And it like popped off the ceiling and like flew right past me. And he could see he was so nervous and like, just like, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but so that was fun. And then, um, Thursday, we booked a tour to, uh, Isla Mujeres Island, um, which was interesting. Um, we were so used to the quiet, calm and serenity of the resort and we hadn't left all week that we were then put on a huge party ferry, uh, to, with loud music and like a bar and all this stuff and lots of kids and it was crazy. And then they take you to dolphin land or something. That's what this is. They have like swimming with dolphins and manatees. And we sat there for a little bit and then we went booked snorkeling, which I hated and, um, was not fun for me at all. They very much rushed you. And again, this tour is not through the resort. Like the resort booked it for us, but yeah, it's not their resort, but it was a side excursion. It was, but it was, they didn't tell you, I had no idea how to swim with the flipper things. They didn't tell you how to put the mask on. Like we jumped in and they were like, let's go. And I do not swim very well, let alone in open water. 
Granted, it was only like 15, 20 feet deep, but that's still much taller than I am, and I could drown. And like they had three or four groups going at the same time with boats all around, and I could not keep the water out of my snorkel. So I was flipping out, and I felt really bad because that's the one thing Andy really wanted to do was snorkel. And I was ruining it for him. And it was over in like 35 minutes. But it was a long swim, too. They didn't like, they're like, oh, we're going to swim to this lighthouse. That was a long way to go and just keep, and I was constantly at the back of the pack. Did not like that. Um, and then we got back to the dolphin place and caught the ferry again to go to the main, or not the mainland, but the city center um, to do some shopping. And you had about an hour and a half. So that was fun to kind of walk the streets and bought some t-shirts and mugs and stuff and walk to a couple beaches and you know, constantly being accosted to buy things and that they sell at every single stand. Um, and then we took the ferry back to the Dolphin Land and then took it back to the mainland. And it was sunny and blisteringly, like, coming through, sun setting, and just crying babies. And we were just like, this is not what we wanted on the last day. But at least we got out and we saw some things. But overall, it was the best vacation I've had in my life. It is exactly what I wanted in a vacation. Um, we hope to get back sooner rather than later, maybe even next year, if we can make it happen. Um, because, like I said, it just, it was exactly what we needed. So um, hopefully if you follow on Instagram or Facebook, you were able to follow on our journey a little bit. Um, I tried to post a little something every day, but... Yeah, so that was our vacation, and we flew back on Friday, and they got us to the airport in Cancun much sooner than we needed to be, so it was a lot of waiting, um, and then there was a lot of turbulence um, on the way back, and the Xanax really didn't help that much, um, but I got home in one piece, didn't think I would, but I did, so that's good, and then it was raining and tons of traffic in Chicago, and it was awful yesterday. It was real bad yesterday. And I went to knitting yesterday, and it was fine. I live a half hour away from our local yarn shop. It was fine here, and then all of a sudden it was like huge raindrops coming at the van, mm -hmm. and then it soon turned into snow, and by the time I hit Bloomington, it was like whiteout conditions. Yeah. Now, nothing stuck because the ground was still too warm, but it was like white out all over Bloomington for about an hour or so. Yeah. And then it was fine when I drove home, but... So it was just, I said, this is the earth, like, mocking me. I was, like, less than 24 hours ago, I was in sunny Cancun, 85 degrees, cursing that I had to wear pants, and now I'm in whiteout driving conditions. Yeah, I mean, that's also Illinois, though. <laughs> I know, but that's true. Because today, so yesterday, it was really bad um, rain, we had hail early on in the morning, and then it just went to rain and then it was kind of dreary for a while and then it was snow and then it was just like we're gonna dial it back and just go back to rain and then it was got really dropped in temperature it was a hot mess yesterday and it's beautiful out today it's still cold mind you but it is sunny light breeze so i mean it's still like 30 something so it's not like you know <laughs> I'll say yeah I haven't been outside so I don't know the yeah the temperature but it is sunny and there's still some trees have leaves yeah you know the the bottom it's leaves so. still pretty out so uh, it was a hot mess yesterday <laughs> and um, so my we my last two weeks were spent here in the states so it's not as exciting I mean a lot of stress with work and um, Someone cannot retire soon enough, and I'm just going to leave it at that, uh, but it was really stressful. Made it through. Uh, it took uh, two weeks ago, I took Friday off because I had enough hours accumulated in my work schedule so I could do that, and that was kind of nice just to be able to, um, because we had a major work event, not this past Thursday, but two weeks ago, and it really extremely stressed me out and I asked for help which is the first time in a while that I've asked and was very like this is what you're doing this is what you're doing this is what you're doing and I got really kind of bossy about it and which is fine um, that's kind of what I'm supposed to do about it but um, it gave me a lot of stress and anxiety leading up to this like 
we're talking a couple of months just because of the way that things have been going and the way that I have been treated. And so I had not been sleeping very well. So the next taking the Friday after the event off was really great. So I slept until about noon, which is really kind of rare for me. Mm -hmm. um, and um, like I didn't go to the gym for the last week and a half prior to that. So that was also a big like diversion from what I have been doing. So it's nice to be able to this week it was nice to be able to get back on track on some things um, and that's really all I can say about it. Um, I went and volunteered last Saturday at a mobile food pantry and that went really well. We helped about 133 families which equated out to about uh, 800 people and so it's really devastating um, to see that much need in the community in which I work in, but also extremely grateful that there was some resources that may provide meals um, that supplemented some of the regular uh, assistance that some of those families may receive. Um, you know, you never know if the food that we handed out that day um, because it was like chicken noodle soup, spaghetti and meatballs in a can, green beans, mandarin oranges, mac and cheese, tuna helper and tuna, you know, you don't know if that, you know, could be the answer to extending a meal for, you know, a family for the week before they get their next assistance or maybe it was an emergency or this, that, and the other, or maybe that is all that they get, you know, so, um, it's devastating that there is that so, so much need, um, but it was great, like I said, that we were able to provide some assistance, um, seeing some of your families that are 4-Hers is really hard because you want to just do more and do better, so that was kind of heartbreaking on my end, um, especially because, like, Legally, I can't, you know, do much about it in terms of, like, a number of things. So, but, um, so I did that and then went to open knitting last week and got to see and hang out with Kelsey and a bunch of other ladies. So that was really awesome. And Kelsey is one of the organizers of Operation Chemo Comfort, which we're yes. going to talk about a little later. Yes, which... By the way, Kelsey might have the hookup for me to become a trophy wife, and I'm all about this. <laughs> Kelsey, don't forget those digits, girl. So, anyways, um, neither here nor there for y'all, but, <laughs> um, so did that, and then this week, um, had just kind of a really busy schedule, and then yesterday, my cousin and I and a friend of ours from high school, we went and tried to volunteer and people were volunteering that did not sign up and so it resulted in like double the amount of people that actually required to be there um, and would legally be safe in that position. So we left early and we went and got coffee and caught up which was nice and then my cousin and I went and got lunch and had lunch with our grandma so that was awesome and I had a party last night and Steve got deviled eggs which Andy does not make um, I make the deviled eggs so uh, whenever we have Thanksgiving or meals together and uh, so yeah it went well speaking of Thanksgiving if you celebrate I hope you have a great Thanksgiving because yeah. that's this week which is crazy yeah like we were leaving for Cancun going boy that's like right after we get back because Andy does a big shindig and it's going to be, I was telling Callie, it's going to be interesting this year because, you know, since my mom and sister have moved down here, they always come over. But um, Andy's dad and grandmother are coming down for the evening and staying through and leaving the next day. Um, not here, but at a hotel. And, um, I mean, his grandmother's really getting a little older and doesn't travel as much. So I think this is kind of like to see the life we've established here a little bit, you know, and whatnot. But it'll be interesting. Um, I mean, whenever you throw my mom in public situations, it's interesting. But 
<laughs> it can also be said of his dad, too. Yeah. So, um, they're both very strong personalities. So, it'll be interesting. I, yeah, I think that's the best way, way to put it. Um, but I think it'll be fine. They've met yeah. before. Um, so. But, um, yeah, I have more to talk about that time frame a little later on. So, keep your ears <laughs> peaked. Shall we get to knitting? Oh, man, it's probably been, you know, 20 minutes, but. Yeah. I know a lot of you were wondering how the trip went for us and things of that nature. And, you know, Kelly's always got stuff to talk about because she's so busy. So let's talk about some knitting. What is taking about? What have we finished? We both have something. Guys, that's two times in a row for me. Exciting. But I'm still going to steal the thunder and go first. So true. <laughs> yesterday yeah. at knitting, I finished the um, A Day to Remember by Hohi Locatelli. And I knit this using Madeline Tosh Prairie, which is a lace weight in the Cove colorway on a size 6 US needle or 4 millimeter needle. And I will show this again next episode when it's blocked because I literally just finished this and I think it's going to grow and open up um, once it's been blocked. So um, here it is in all of its glory. You can see the kind of, I kind of like the, how it curls yeah. at the end. So we'll see how, what it does after it's blocked. I really just want to get some more um, growth out of it. So it's a semicircular shawl with these eyelets placed in between garter. And... Lacey takes a long time. I mean, this looks smallish again. I'm hoping it's going to grow. But this is about 744 yards of yarn in here. Um, so, it's easy to throw on, even though it looks like a hot mess on me right now. And I'm hoping it'll drape better, especially with the lace once it's been blocked. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know how... I threw it on yesterday. I don't know how feminine it looks, but... Um, I don't know, I kind of like it, though, too, so... Yeah. We'll see. I can't give everything to Kelly. That's okay. I mean, I could. But... She doesn't like the scummy color, probably. I do. I just don't know that I could pull that off. <laughs> I thought it was funny. There were several people who commented, and who knows, maybe this will be a knit it forward. Yeah. Uh, but there are several people who are kind of like, I love the color. I can't believe how you two were describing it. Um, I love the color, too. It yeah. drew me in. It's just knit up. If it's not worn against, I think, the right color. So it yeah. can look a little drab. That is the word I was looking for last year. Last year. Last year? Yeah. Last episode was drab. You know what I mean? It's a little grungy. A little dungy. Grungy? Dungy? dungy. Is that a word? I don't know. Anyway. So it's done. Done. So that's all that I finished. I have one thing, sort of, just a second. I had one last stitch on this double point. Alright, so I have one thing finished and I have sort of another. So um, I finished a boomerang and this is in um, La Hala. La Hala. <laughs> um, but it's from Ba Yarns and it's in the La Hala, La Hoya. La Hoya. We call it La Hala and you have to do the raise the roof motion at the at the shop. And it's in the Because I'm Happy colorway. And I knit this on a size 4 US needle. So which is a, which is a departure from my usual 3. So. And a departure from my usual 6. Yeah. So, hers comes out a little more, um... Dense. Dense, yeah. And a little smaller, a little more shawl -y. Not that the boomerang in itself is a shawl, but more scarfish, I think. Yeah. So, this is not for me. This is actually a Christmas present, so... Woo-hoo! Get it a schedule. Done. Yeah. And <clears throat> I told my friend, Katie, who I work out with in the morning, I said, well, you're going to get something hand-knit, so you better be appreciative of it. Um, because... This colorway, she's a Packers fan, and I I just think that it kind of looks Packers-esque in the sense that there's a lot of yellow, there's a lot of green, so it'll go with, like, the jacket that she has that's, you know, got the Packers logo on it and whatnot, so um, I did not use the full skein. I have probably... A little bit bigger than a walnut in its shell size ball 
saying. Your measurement system is <laughs> quite unique. <laughs> Well, I don't like it when people say, like, I have, like, a walnut size. I mean, like, a walnut size, are you saying, like, walnut in the shell or walnut outside of the shell? Because a walnut outside of the shell is vastly smaller than a walnut in the shell. I'm just saying. Which is vastly smaller than black walnuts in their casing, which is then in the shell, which is then. Exactly. that's what we have in our backyard. Exactly. So I don't think it's that weird, in case if you wanted to know. So, the other thing that I'm... You're not done. I'm, Those aren't finished. But I will go first. So. so, moving into now performing. Yes. Since Diva over here is putting her foot down. Her feet down. Wait till you see her. Transition. Mm -hmm. Seamless. That's what she did. Seamless. So, this was my first sock that I had done. Minus the heel. And I got the second one done. Minus the heel. So, guess what? Homegirl is going to have three times in a row where she's going to have finished objects next week. Or next time we record. So, boom. So excited about that. And then what I'm working on currently, so I just cast these on, um, but this is Knit Picks Felici in the Jingle colorway. Um, our yarn fairy mother gave us this in a package and she said we could take something and so I grabbed this it's in the like I said knit picks Felici but it's in the jingle colorway so I'm gonna make self-striping socks for my mom for Christmas. Did you ever finish her last I have year's not Christmas last year's no gifts okay. no my mom is so sneaky she saw Steve and Andy vending in Missouri when she was on vacation and she was like you kind of want to convince Callie she should uh, finish my other sock and she was like, can you ask her when my socks are going to be done? Because she just, it goes in one ear and out the other with me. So maybe she hears it from you. And I was like, she still hasn't finished those? <laughs> She's like, no. No, and here's why. I mean, okay, I did this to myself. I have no one to blame but myself. But I was like, oh, I'm not going to do afterthought he heels. I'm going to, like, old school it and do, like... An actual turning of the heel. What was I doing? I should not, excuse me, I should not have challenged myself in any sort of way. I should have just done what I was doing because the short or the sock is a little bit short and my mom's gonna like suck it up and wear it because she loves me. But the one that I did get done that did get wrapped and put under the Christmas tree and she she brought this up a few days ago and she was like so am I gonna get two pairs of socks this year and I said let's not get greedy yo so we shall see maybe I'll have two finished objects next week you heard it here folks maybe I'm not promising anything so is that all you have on the needles yeah okay now wait for seven projects and at least I've got variety. It's true. Um, but one of them I didn't bring up. The grandma's favorite microfiber blanket. Still haven't brought it up. Again, a couple rows. I'll probably show it when it's done. I keep saying it should be done, but... You know, Andy and I spent a week together. It was beautiful. But we don't spend a whole lot of time together in front of the TV downstairs, which is where the blanket lives. So. You know, that would have been a nightmare to take on the plane. And also a nightmare to knit on the beach, It wouldn't have too. gone on the plane, because I don't think it would have fit in a carry-on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I only brought, well, I brought enough to knit two pairs of socks and a boomerang, and you'll see what I got done on vacation, which I did knit a lot. I knit on the beach in plain sight of people. I knit on the plane there. Um, everything I read said, don't take your knitting from Cancun to the United States, that they will, um, confiscate it, um, or make you go back and uncheck your luggage and put it in and put back. But let me tell you, getting through the airport in Cancun is so much, I know O'Hare is like the largest airport, but... They don't, like, even make you take your shoes off in Mexico. I'm just like, walk through. Okay, you're good. Um, so I was like, oh, man, I should have brought the knitting and seen what happened. But So the first thing I'm going to show you is my flax sweater. 
by Tin Can Knits, and I'm using Barocco Vintage Colors in number 5220, which is Cafe Latte, on size 6 and 8 US, which is 4 and 5 millimeter needles. And I had finished the first sleeve minus binding it off before I left on vacation. So last night I bound off the first sleeve and I joined yarned in to do, well, if you do one sleeve, you got to do the other, right? So um, here's my flax so far. I tried it on and I actually stopped the sleeve an inch and a half short of where they wanted you to go because I guess I'm bigger, but I'm not taller. So my arms are not that long. So I was glad I tried it on because I wasn't going to. I was like, meh. So here it is, I am alternating skeins throughout the body and the sleeves to um, almost like it's hand dyed to avoid pooling and flashing. So here's the first sleeve, all the way down there. And then I've joined in the yarn for the second sleeve over here. So hoping that um, this will zoom zoom, but it'll probably be, I was like, boy, if I focused on it this week, maybe I could have a sweater to wear Thanksgiving. Ooh. I don't think so. Hit him with that uh, homemade sweater, yo. Yeah, we could, but probably not. It'd probably be best that you don't, because then if you get gravy or, you know, stuff. It'd melt it, right in. <laughs> it's that, that's why I want to wear it. It's Thanksgiving colors. It could be a proud turkey on Thanksgiving. Anyway, um, next I worked on this morning a little bit. Um, the Behind the Scenes by Michelle Hunter. This was a mystery knit along, which is now over. Um, and it is knit out of Haiku O in the WOW colorway. And I'm using size 10 US 8mm needles. And I'm firmly into Clue 3, but Clue 3 is the majority of the knitting. Um, so. I started the second of six repeats of the first part of Clue 3, so you can see the um, cable starting in the middle of the diamonds here. So there'll be buttons on this end and then button holes on the other end so you can make it into an infinity loop. Um, but I think it's it's not bad, it's just this particular yarn is 100% baby alpaca and it sheds a lot, um, and, but it's really soft. Um, so I'm not sure. I have an idea of somebody that I might give this to, but we'll see. We shall see. I have a piece of baby alpaca on my cheek right now and it's bothering me. Yeah. Yeah. Careful, it flies up your nose real easy. It's like crack. No. Hey! Like crack. <laughs> Next is my Winter Wonderland hat, which I just picked up for recording. And um, this is knit out of Leading Men Fiber Arts Box Office, worsted weight in the Winter Wonderland colorway, which was our November colorway of the month. And again, this will this will start my next pile of donations um, for the Operation Chemo Comfort Hat Drive for 2018. I was able to, me personally, I was able to donate 17 hats this year, so that made me super happy. Mm -hmm. um, that was much better than the three I donated last year. So, um, enjoying it. I'll be getting to the crown decreases here soon, um, and that's knit on a size six and eight US as well. Um, and then, the one thing I worked on vacation, I've got a hoe, which is a half-finished object. They're my Cancun socks, or as I like to call them, my sand and sea socks. So, speaking of our fairy yarn mother and gifting us yarn, um, the body of these socks is knit out of Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. Now, oh, what did I... Is it in here? Um, I never even looked at the... Oh, no. I'm dropping oh, no. everything. i got to get that. Um, she, this was from one of her packages to us, and it is, yep, Knit Pick Stroll Tweed in the North Pole Heather colorway, and I had 250 gram balls. I still had this much left from the first one, and then I put it in contrasting cuff heels and toes, and I did a heel flap and turned the heel, like Callie was talking about. It was nice to go back to that, uh, honestly. I think they do fit better, uh, but especially with self-striping, you don't want to necessarily put in a contrasting heel flap because when you're decreasing the gusset, it's going to mess with the width of your stripes. So yes, they'll continually go down the front, but it's going to mess with the width of them as you're decreasing. So I really only ever do the contrasting um, heel flap and heel turn when it's not self-striping. I can do that. Um, so I did, I'm happy with this. These are for me and I finally got to use my man size sock blockers that I picked up at Stitches Midwest which has a little cutout hedgehog on it. 
And these are from Perfectly Catchy, like Cat's Purr um, Designs. Um, and they vended, I know, at all the stitches. I'm not sure if they um, have an online presence or not. But Amber got me onto these. And while Amber collects them every stitches, I think I'm good with these. So I've got some regular size and one size. But So one sock is done. I have not started the second sock. Um, I got all the way down to Kitchener and the toe in Mexico, and then I had to pack it in my luggage, so. But I'm happy with these. I think these yeah. are adorable, so. And I just loved the tweed. I just thought it worked with, um, because there's some sand in here, knitted in with love. But, you know, like the, the sand and the rocks and a few things on the beach, but it was pretty much a white sandy beach, uh, but, you know, and then the wet sand, and so. You can see the, oops. Gotta love our glaring light. That's kind of... Uh, the Tweedy there. I think this is the first time I've knit with Tweed sock yarn, though. I think I've done a Tweed from Ireland that our friend Debbie gifted me after she visited um, Ireland several years ago, which was not the softest stuff, but it was woolly, Tweed, woolly, <laughs> Tweedy wool. Um, so there was that. So um, I'm excited to get a, the second sock on the needles here soon. Um, I did pick up a second skein uh, for in case I finished a whole pair of socks um, out of some regia that I purchased, but these will eventually be on the needles at some point because they were randomly selected using my random number generator on my stash. So um, the light has been shown on them. I don't want to hide it back in the stash. I'm like, it's been picked. It'll just be next. So yeah, there's that. All right, um, what is in rehearsal? Um, I'm going to cast on my Winter City by Christopher Salas. I've balled up the yarn, all three skeins of DK, and I put it in my Fat Squirrel Fibers bag um, so I can take part in the Knit Along, which, by the way, we are hosting a Knit Along for Winter City in the Leading Men Fiber Arts Ravelry Group. Um, it must be The shawl must be completed by the end of the year and posted in the FO thread. Um, you do not have to use the Winter City set. However, one of the three colors must be Leading Men Fiber Arts to qualify, and the prize will be a $50 gift certificate to our shop. Um, there's been some good chatter in there. Um, there was a slight typo in the mosaic of the colors, so hopefully Christopher will be updating that soon, but if you have questions, you can check that chatter thread. Um, there has also been um, a couple people saying that their color A has been running really close to running out, so you might want to check your gauge um, compared to the gauge in the pattern, because I know Christopher said he had a decent amount left over of color A, which is the speckled, so um, check your gauge and your needle size with that. Um, if you think you're worried or if you tend to knit um, looser than most, um, you might want to check that. So, But I'm excited to cast that on here in the next day or two. Very cool. Um, I really am just trying to get things off of my needles. And this was actually the first thing that I've cast on new in quite some time. So. You've been, you actually have been inspiring people to like open up old project bags. I know Amber even texted me while watching an episode of ours going, she makes me want to open all the project bags and find what I've been, you know, what's been hidden. You know, it's funny because like, I'm really trying to deep clean our house. Like one of what my- What are you not trying to deep clean your I know. house though? I mean, in all honesty, you mentioned yeah. cleaning and she's like, I have been trying and I have been doing this and I cleaned this room from top to bottom. Wow. But it's just one of those things that never ends. You it know? never You ends. clean one room and the next room is dirty. The last one you did is dirty yeah. already. One of my things that, like, partially that's sparking this is that um, my parents have been married for over 40 years. Okay? So they've lived in this house for over 36 years in this house, in the house that we're in. And something that, like, completely and utterly terrifies me is if my dad goes first, my mom is selling the house and, like, moving. That has been said. It's been a long-term decision. And if mom goes first, we don't even have an option. Like, that's not something that we've even talked about. So, like, that terrifies me just saying that out loud. Um, but, you know, that means putting the house on the market. And that means, you know, going through... 40 some years of combined junk between the both of them and dad's stuff is not stuff that like I mean it's a lot of hunting things like a lot of guns a lot of 
you know, shell boxes and ammo and taxidermy. Uh, in case if you didn't know, we have a large taxidermy collection. <laughs> and so, um, like, it's a lot of stuff. And, like, they antique collected for a number of years. So, like, the amount of stuff that we would have to get rid of. And, like, it's not stuff that, like, you know, is inexpensive, like, for certain things. I mean, like, yeah, you have, like, the random crap that's, like, that you accumulate in your house just because, but then there's, like, stuff that, like, actually has value, and, like, not knowing some of those pieces, how valuable they are, ridiculous. So, <laughs> but one of the things that, like, pretty much has to happen, because we've talked about this, is in order for the house to be put back onto the market, the whole house kind of needs to be rewired electrically speaking, which is going to cost a large sum of money. So, um, just trying to prep for that. Because we have a new well, we have a new cistern, we have a new um, septic tank, so it's not like a new water heater and things like that. So, like, we have large pieces done, but the wiring is going to be tens of thousands of dollars to do because it's a two-story house and like our main part of our house where the kitchen and living room is was built in the 1800s so like and things have been like upgraded but like you can only do so much yeah so the joys of home ownership yeah, yeah. that's our goal in the next year fully own this home yeah we now own our van. That's exciting. We got the title in the mail yesterday, so. We don't have any car payments anymore. Being, though, let me tell you, we were talking about this, like, financial responsibility and side, quick side note. There is no feeling, though, like, making le making a gain in your financial stability. Um, paying off, you know, a bill or something. Like, you know your, hash, your hardcore hashtag adulting. Yeah. When you're like, I got the title for my car. Or, like, I never felt so much relief as when I paid off all my student loans. Because you don't think about those things. And I lived off of loans in, in college. I was like, eh, when I'm older and I make money. And then, you know, you got to start paying and it's like... Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm doing Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. So, just... You know, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know that, but, um, it's very enlightening. I mean, like, it's not rocket science, and I keep telling no. myself that, but, like, it is really, like, taking that advanced step of, like, you need to get your life together as an adult. <laughs> and I told Callie, I said, we follow it to a certain degree. We follow the snowball effect. Mm -hmm. right? You take your smallest thing that you can pay off, and you work on that till it's paid off, and then you immediately take whatever that payment was and apply it to your next yeah. smallest. And that's how we got, I, I got a student debt. That's how we paid off our vehicles. That's how we're now almost doubling our mortgage every month. Mm -hmm. um, and in hopes of being able to, you know, have this house so that if we make a decision to move or to build a home with a studio, that when we sell, it's not just tit for tat. Like, yeah. we'll actually get what we put into it or at least get, you know. Yeah. Get some equity out of the house. Um, so... Anyway, um, let's talk behind the scenes since we got off yeah. topic. Um, my spinning. I'm still working on some Miss Babs. Um, merino bamboo and silk top in the Horizon colorway, which looks like this. This is the second two ounces. I did not take my Hanson mini spinner to Cancun, so I just did a little bit of spinning last night and this morning. Um, so there's that. That's going. I'm doing a two-ply fractal spin with that. In the scene shop, my cross-stitching... No, like I said, lost the bug for a while. It's still sitting there. I came back from vacation and my stand that I bought um, was like, it had drooped down to the floor. It doesn't, it's real finicky about holding its shape. And I, I'm a little disappointed in that. Like, I feel like I constantly am tightening to the point I'm like, I'm going to break this thing and like, shouldn't it just hold its shape? But, because it's on a series of arms so that you can adjust it. But anyway, long story short. Um, so let's move into the spotlight. What are we watching and reading? I'm still reading the same um, magical uh, wizard and gay hornless unicorn book. Uh, I have not listened to it. I didn't listen to it at all on, on vacation. So 
Uh, I'll tell you more about that and give my official review when I hopefully finish it by the next time. Um, gotta catch up on the season finale of American Horror Story Cult, because, I mean, I stuck it out this far. I'm mean, gonna at least need to watch the last one. Um, we still need to catch up on Will and Grace. I think we caught up on a few of them. Um, you know, potato chips. Potato chip type of viewing. Speaking of potato chip type of viewing, we, um, by, like, day two... We, we were told we could hook up our Netflix or our TV in our room, which we enjoyed for, like, before we'd go to dinner, because we ate dinner later, you know, you're not on the beach anymore. It's not like we stayed in our room and watched Netflix. But um, we finished watching, we had started it one episode a while ago, and we finished season one of The Good Place, which stars Kristen um, Bell and, um, oh, what's his name, Ted Danson. And uh, it's funny, and it's short, like, 22 minutes, you know, episodes um it, it's good it's funny and it's about um you know people who die and they're sent to the good place and you can't curse and you can't it's about morality and ethics and um it, it is really funny so season two um part of it is out on netflix but yet it's still airing on nbc uh, it's confusing so i'll let you know um as i listen or watch more of that um, I'm currently watching Slasher Season 2, which, as I talked about last time, it's a completely new storyline from Season 1. Akin to what American Horror Story does, there's some reoccurring actors in Season 2 from Season 1. Again, it's very B-rated. Um, but if you like horror and slasher-type films, then you'll enjoy, enjoy the ride. Uh, I started a movie on in the airport in Cancun, and I haven't finished it yet. It's a Netflix original called 1922. It's based off of a Stephen King book or novel. Um, it's about a man who murders his wife and convinces his son to um, partake in it. Um, I'm not even halfway through it, so um, I'll let you know what I think when I finish that. I'm hopefully going to finish that tonight or tomorrow. So that's all that I'm watching and reading. Very cool. Um, as far as books go, I'm still reading Thinking in Pictures by Temple Grandin. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm also reading Gabrielle Union's new book, um, We're Gonna Need More Wine, which I had the opportunity to meet her and get it signed. Uh, so reading those two actively, um, things that I'm watching, just watching a lot of things that we have on the DVR, so a lot of the NCISs and whatnot, um, Things that I'm listening to, um, I can't remember if I've said this when the album came out, but I'm a huge fan of Macklemore's Gemini album. I think it is a departure with, from when he was with Ryan Lewis in terms of some style differences, but I think it's really good. Um, I, on a country venture, really enjoy Cole Swindell's album. Um, his new one, um, that's pretty good. I also kind of like avoided, not avoided per se, but like just because I didn't have Spotify on my phone or a Spotify account for that matter, um, Chance the Rapper, to my understanding, he doesn't have any of his music on iTunes or that kind of thing. Like he doesn't actually sell his music. Um, it's like free streaming and the money that he generates is through concerts and merchandise and that kind of thing. Um, so his album Coloring Book is on Spotify and it is amazing and I really enjoy it. Um, he did a song with Kanye West called uh, All We Got and I it's the, like the first song on the album and I really enjoy it. Um, I think the brass section in the song is phenomenal. Uh, so there's that. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, there's a new to me rapper. He's been in the game for a little bit. His name is NF uh, is what he goes by. His first name's Nate and I can't pronounce his last name, but his like stage name is NF and I am really enjoying his stuff. It, he's from Michigan so he's kind of got like a a vibe of like Eminem meets like um, Machine Gun Kelly meets like you know just kind of some I'd say like there's kind of like elements of like lyric wise of like Common the Rapper in there too. So 
I like it. I think he's got some good stuff. Yeah, so that's what I'm listening to. Awesome. I have no stash enhancements, so nothing to talk about there. I technically bought two skeins of Cascade um, uh, cotton last week because I wanted to bulk up my stash to do some more hats throughout the year. So Cool. We have a new giveaway this week, and it is, as I promised, um, from Bitter Buffalo, whom I got to meet at the Fall Fiber Expo in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And um, it's Bitter Buffalo Fiberwork. She's on Etsy, and this is in her Beetlegeist base in the colorway Haunted. And so she donated this to the podcast. Um, it is an 80% superwash Targi, 10% nylon, 466 yards. It's a beautiful speckled, um, you know, subtle Halloween colorway, but you can wear it all year round. Now, normally I would send you to her shop to take a look around, but she only had like nine items in there and only one of them was yarn. So I decided rather than have you go visit her shop, which you should, um, but to enter, what I would like you to do is tell me what would you knit with this? So it's a fingering weight, 466 yards. We'd love if you'd link to a pattern on Ravelry so people can, you know, go down the clicking rabbit hole of finding new patterns. But if you just want to put the name and the, um, designer that's fine um but what would you knit with one skein or what would you incorporate with like if you have some in your stash that you're like oh this would go beautifully with this this and this and this pattern you know go all out um but i will use a random number generator to select a winner before we record um in two weeks and you must be a member of the group in order to be eligible to win that's the dramatic knits video podcast group and only one entry per person please so that's this week's giveaway Let's move into a round of applause. So our Operation Chemo Comfort Hat Drive Knit Along has come to an end. Um, they are going to be distributing hats in the beginning of December. As Callie talked about, she got to meet up with Kelsey, who came down from um, the Milwaukee area to Bloomington, to our local yarn store, which was a drop-off point for hats, um, to do a meet and greet and pick up the hats. And I got an official count from Kelly, the owner, um, yesterday that 76 hats were donated to um or collected at her store so that's amazing and i know several of you came in that are somewhat local from the um heard from the podcast and donated thank you so very much they are very much appreciated um unfortunately i was not able to see kelsey as that was the day that i was leaving for vacation um but i callie was able to yeah. attend and i think it was a good good time yeah. had by all and the hats were phenomenal you know there was a lady that um that is uh, local to our store that comes in and, um, you know, she helps Kelly here and there with certain projects and, you know, she was digging through the box and like, we all kind of like took turns to, you know, kind of like ooh and ah over hats. So it was really neat to see. And it was also really neat to see different patterns that you may not be as familiar with, but someone else can like rattle off the name of the pattern pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, that individual tried on like three hats and kind of was like, are you sure you need these three hats? Like <laughs> what, what, you know, so. Well, and in our Ravelry group, which is where people needed to post to, um, to be entered for prizes. And there may be some slight crossover in numbers, um, between, you know, if somebody posted in our group and then donated it, but I don't think there's going to be very many. Um, there was 185 in the Ravelry thread. So added together with that 76, we had in Dramatic Knits group, I'm con considering it all one, mm -hmm. 261 hats. Now we just hit about 150 last year. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing to yeah. do 111 more, almost double, not quite, but almost double than what we did last year. I can't wait to see what we do next year yeah. because all you viewers now know, hey, I can start stashing some hats throughout the year. That helped me. That's how I went from three to 17. Mm -hmm. So you know this is coming back next year in the fall. So, um, and I've got to do a shout out to um, a lady in our group, Mystic, or no, Stormy. Thank you so much, Stormy. Yeah. She goes by Mystic Stormy. She was such a huge cheerleader last year and this year. She had the most hats by far last year. And guess what? She outdid it this year. She had 90 hats she entered into the hat drive. 90. Yeah. Nine zero. That's crazy. 
but also crazy good. It is. And I think this is, that's like her jam. You know, that's her bread and butter and knitting. I think she does. And, you know, and we were very honored that she um, signed on with our cause to donate to. And so thank you so much, Stormy. Yes. We seriously appreciate your help. And I just want to give you a shout out. Thanks to everyone. Yeah. But I mean, you went above and beyond. So thank you so much. That being said, we have eight prizes we are going to be giving away. But I'm going to do prizes a little bit differently. We have a multitude of prizes to pick from, thanks to viewers like you. Sound like PBS. <laughs> and, uh, you know, our fairy yarn mother. So, um, if I call your name, please private message me via Ravelry, Dramatic Knits on there, and let me know if you would prefer yarn or a pattern book. Like, I have a multitude of books. I will pick the book. Um, so you won't really know, and I'm going to pick the yarn, so you won't really know. Um, if you prefer a pattern book, like if you're like, my stash is huge, maybe I'd like a new book, I will pick and send a book your way. If you pick yarn, I'd like you to let me know what color, what's your favorite color, what color you're looking for, and what weight. I don't, that does not guarantee that's what you're going to get, but that'll kind of give me some perusal options while I'm looking through our stash of prizes, okay? So you get to choose yarn or book. If you choose yarn, tell me what color and weight you're thinking of. Okay? If you don't care, just let me know that and I'll close my eyes and pull something out of our, our bin. So, here we go. Are we ready? I'm going to go through this list quickly, so keep your ears peeled if you were a part of the knit-along. So the first prize goes to number 80, who is Mama C, and that's Christina. Congratulations. Number 44, Knitting by the Lake, who is Beth. Number 94, Victoria, who's Victoria. Number 134, Happy K, and that's Faith. Number 108, Mystic Stormy, and that's Stormy. Number 10, who is Sonic Freak, and that's Amanda. Number 88, Kovica, who is Kim. And number 152, Heli, Gre Heli Creed, who is Valkyrie. So congratulations to all eight of you. Let me tell you, I had to do a lot of redrawing because I figure if you win a prize, you win a prize. Like... We don't need to do multitudes of prizes, even though several of you did multitudes of hats. Just figure out to spread the wealth. It's not about the prizes, right? It's just a little added incentive. So those eight of you, please private message me again. Dramatic Knits. Send me your first and last name, mailing address, and what you would prefer. Book, yarn. Yarn, color, and weight. Okay? If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you to everyone again yeah. who participated. Oh, Steph. All right. Last episode, our drawing was for the book... Knitting 24-7 by Veronik Avery. And our prompt to be entered was, if you could go back in time and change one thing, what would it be? And the winner was number five, who is Dragon Dame, and that's Michelle from Georgia. And I won't read you exactly what she wrote. A lot of people got really personal, and it was really heartwarming to read those because mm -hmm. it feels like, even though we only know each other via the internet that were comfortable enough to share some of those experiences yeah. meant a lot to me. And I'm sure Callie felt the same yeah. reading over those. So I kind of summarized what um, Michelle wrote and she just basically said, not spending enough time with somebody while they're still around, um, you know, and enjoying their presence while you still have that opportunity. And so I think a lot of us can relate to that um, to certain extents. So congratulations, Michelle. Thank you for sharing that. And um, again, direct message me, Dramatic Knits, with your first and last name and mailing address, and I'll get the book out to you as soon as I can. So November is going to be gone before we know it, but it, whatever you finish in the month of De November, you can put in our November 2017 Race to the Finished Object Contest. We'll have a physical prize as well as a pattern prize from our featured designer, who's Christopher Salas. This is his last month of being featured with us, so we are on the lookout for a new designer. If you know of a designer or are a designer who would like to be featured on the podcast, please send either one of us um, a private message on Ravelry, and we will get you hooked up. Um, if not, we may not have, you know, pattern prizes for a month or two, um, or one of us will get a bug up our rear end and actually contact some designers, but we've been lucky enough yeah. for the most part we don't have to um, go searching. So so that is that in terms of the podcast. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Leading Men Fiber Arts in the center stage section, but you don't want to go away. I don't have anything to show, but I'm going to be quick, but you don't want to go away. 
because I'm so excited. I had a, in my eye, in my humble opinion, um, a genius idea yesterday. Thanksgiving's coming up. And in the past two or three years, we've done a Thanksgiving progressive sale, which it, your percentage increases throughout the week and blah, 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 blah. And it's kind of a hassle to deal with and keep track of. And so I said, I want to do something different this year. Say and what? I do. I do. And we wanted to simplify it. And then what do I do? I kind of simplified it and then made it a little more challenging. Challenging. But I bear with me. So Andy went and ran errands yesterday. And I was thinking by myself yesterday in the studio. And I was like, how do I want to do this? I said, well, let's narrow it down. Let's do three days. So we're going to run our Thanksgiving sale from Thursday, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and Small Business Saturday. I figure that's a good smattering of days, three days, 72 hours. And I was thinking, I was like, you know, what is Thanksgiving about? Giving thanks and giving back and being thankful for what you have in your life and, and what you've accomplished and what you can do and who is in, in your life. And I said, you know, we've, Andy and I have really wanted to do a, um, a charity sale at some point. And I said, well, why not now? So I did some um, perusing, and I found an organization that I think suits our bill and suits our company, um, and that is the Chicago Arts Partnership in Education. It's an acronym of CAPE, and what they do is they provide funds for Chicago public schools um, to dabble in the arts more, whether that's theater arts, music, arts education, um, dance, things of the performing arts, um, and it had really good reviews on charity websites, so we decided we're going to link up with that program, and we're going to give you the opportunity to do what you, how you want to be involved. So for those three days, you can use the code THANKS, and that's going to get you 20% off your order. 20%, it's a good discount, I think it's pretty nice, mm -hmm. um, and you can enjoy that. Great. That is awesome. Now, if you feel so inclined, you can use the code THANKS10, and that will get you 10% off of your order, but then we will match 10%, that same amount discount, will be donated to CAPE. If you feel so inclined, and we hope that you do, if you use the code THANKS20, that will get you 1% off of your order, but we will then match that percentage by 20, and we will donate that to Kate. So, again, there's going to be three different options, and it's up to you in terms of where you want your savings to go. Um, you can use thanks. That'll get you 20% off your order. No donation. That's fine. You can use thanks 10, 1, 0, and that'll get you 10% off, and then we will match that and donate to Kate. Or you can use thanks 20, that'll get you 1% off, but we will match that times 20 and give 20% of your order to Kate. So I'm really excited about this. I, I can't wait to see what we can donate. Um, and then, you know, once the sale's over and we tally numbers, I'll make sure to take a screenshot of the receipt so that you can see how much we've raised. Um, I, I wanted to keep it with youth and theater because that's, you know, what I used to do and that's where our namesake came from, and I wanted to keep it somewhat local, so Chicago is, you know, just a hop, skip, and a jump down the state from us, or up the state from us, so um, there's tons of things in LA and New York, but, um, so that's what we've decided to do, so I hope you will peruse our shop on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. I'm working on getting it as full as I can, and I'll keep trying to add things. We've got a bit of down stock that I can add to the shop, so Very cool. come and check out now, what we have. Now, usually you address this when you do the progression sale, so I think it might be good to address how does custom orders play into effect in this per Thank sale? You. Um, no custom orders. We'll take them, but it's not going to affect the sale at all. Um, it is because we have a lot on our docket right now. Um, it's purely what's available and online in the shop. So thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that. Um, as much as we'd love to, um, you know, the sale, while we want to give back, it's also to kind of help move product that we already have. So um, you can still place a custom order, but the sale will not apply. So so I'm excited for that. And I will have that in the show notes as well as in the Leading Men Fiber Arts um, Ravelry group. And um, it'll be posted to Instagram and Facebook. So 
Very cool. Um, last thing I want to talk about is that our final show of the year is a trunk show at our local yarn store, Le Mouton Rouge Knittery, as part of her hand-dyed holiday that she, this is year three. It'll be on December 2nd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. if you can stop by. Um, you know, I'll be there all day. There may be some other special guests and podcasters, um, a handful of them maybe that might show up. I so, will be there. I have the day off. I requested it. So Callie will be there. Are you going to stay all day? Okay. So I will be there. Callie will be there. Um, other people will be there. I don't want to name names quite yet in case, you know, things fall through. But um, we know of several other people that are going to also attend, whether it's all day. Some might be coming in the afternoon. Um, if you are not a fan of crowds, I say come after lunch. Like 1 o'clock mm -hmm. to 4 o'clock is much um, more subdued. Um, it's not such a madhouse in there. Um, so... There's that, but there will be thousands of skeins of hand-dyed yarn available um, for you at this event. So, I would also just add that if you want to make it a trip, like a full-day thing, if you're a couple of hours away, there are tons and tons of um, chain restaurants in the Bloomington Normal area in case of like you have certain food allergies or concerns about dietary restrictions. Most everything that we have is available, and that's all fine and good. But we also have a number of really small businesses, um, small business restaurants that are open too, like Kelly's Bakery is downtown, and their bakery case is always popping. This is like not a joke. There are tons of things in there. She's got a full menu. There's just a lot of little different things around town, so um, that might be worth researching. And if, if you, you have any questions, it. she will know about that. Yeah. So I would um, email and private message Kelly about that if you're looking for restaurant recommendations. Because um, if you're looking for it, yeah. Bloomington probably has it. So Yeah. And especially because, you know, if you have vegetarian or vegan concerns, I'm getting a little bit more... Uh, Educated? Understand. Educated, yeah, because my my overall boss is vegan. So um, knowing certain options in town is kind of helpful, especially mm. because, you know, we're in the Midwest, and, you know, as much as we are progressive in certain things, we're not super progressive in other areas. So, <laughs> <laughs> And being vegan is not necessarily one of those. So I can help. So I think that's it for us this episode. We hope you enjoyed yeah. the show and us blabbering and talking on. <laughs> but, you know, we're friends. It's yeah. chit-chatting. One way, currently. So you guys leave some comments. Yeah. Speaking of which, you can find the show and leave comments and subscribe and leave ratings on places like um, iTunes and YouTube. And um, you can always find the show itself at DramaticNuts.com. So we'd love if you join our Ravelry group. And, yeah. Yeah. So, until we see you again after Thanksgiving and hand eyed holiday in two weeks, we hope you knit something dramatic. dramatic. <laughs>